Hello friends, welcome back to Raju Notes channel, your current affairs weekly update. Today, we will do the updates that have happened from 27th of March to 3rd of April 2022. This week has been uh, predominantly with Russia-Ukraine war, then uh, is Sri Lanka getting into an economic crisis, there's some change in income tax rules, the IPL going on, the crisis in Pakistan, uh, the uh, new movie RRR, and uh, also the uh, high-level delegation visits happening to India. All these encompass this week. However, let's quickly go to the other news as well, which are very much essential for your uh, interviews and examinations. The first news now is coming from China. Basically, it is from Shanghai. Uh, Shanghai has been put under lockdown uh, from Monday. And if you recollect or if you know, Shanghai is a city with 26 million people. So if China is putting a city of 26 million people under a lockdown, that means there is certainly something wrong which the world is yet to know. And one fine day we will wake up to something which China will proclaim that this has happened and this is a new virus which has come in. So I have been requesting you time and again to please subscribe to my channel and click that bell icon. Even if you don't do it, it's okay, but please encourage your friends, your families and you yourself to wear the mask and don't get complacent. There is certainly something in the air in China and it will take no time to reach India also. So please be careful on that issue. India is currently operating about 22 nuclear reactors for various reasons in India, majority of being for the power supply. Now, India is planning to build another 10 nuclear reactors in a fleet mode from next year. Well, what is a fleet mode? A fleet mode is where the, you've, uh, from the FPC, uh, you start uh, uh, making this um, reactors in next three years. So it is, uh, FPC is basically the first pour of concrete. The first pour of concrete for about 700 megawatt atomic plant has already been uh, scheduled for in Karnataka from 2023. And uh, it is uh, expected to build all over them over a p period of five years from the FPC. A very proud moment, I must say, for India. PV Sindhu has become the second Indian female badminton player to win the Swiss Open title. Uh, she defeated 26-year-old uh, uh, Thailand's uh, Busanan with 21-16 and 21-8 in the finals to win her second title of 2022. So, Sanya, uh, sorry, Saina uh, Nehwal has become the first Indian woman to win the Swiss Open in 2011 also. Well, uh, we, last time we discussed as to how there is a threat to the petrodollar. Well, in the same lines, now Russia's uh, government controlled energy firm, that is the Gazprom, has asked the India's Gale to pay for the gas imports in euro instead of dollar. Well, see, the clear cut, it is an open... Uh, request coming in from Russia to India to pay in euros. Well, uh, what are the implications of this? First and foremost, petrodollar falls. The world starts is already started looking for uh, various other kinds of payments instead of dollar. Uh, ma now it is being talked of in currency, cryptocurrencies. And now with this in euro, suppose it comes in euro, Russia will have an upper hand because it has gone, it would have gained the euros in its own kitty. And Europe is the one which is trying to put sanctions so he can even uh, economically probably uh, put some kind of a pressure on Europe. But uh, let's wait and see how this thing develops. The Union Minister of States for Home Affairs, Ajesh Mishra, Mishra Teni, introduced the Criminal Procedure Identification Bill 2022 in Lok Sabha on Monday. Opposition parties raised a lot of objection on this bill and it is called that it is unconstitutional. Well, what does this bill do? The bill has basically uh, expands the gambit of uh, a person where whose details it can be taken. Basically, it authorizes the National Crime Record Bureau to collect, store and preserve details like a palm. Uh, initially, it were, they were just fingerprints and the footprints, but now the National Crime Record Bureau can collect your palm prints, your iris, your retina scan, your behavioral attributes such as your signatures, handwritings. Maybe it can collect your blood, semen, hair, samples, and swabs for analyze and store it well this is a new bill which has been introduced so uh, you should be aware of this bill last time we had discussed the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Gramin that is PMAYG <coughs> 
under that about 5.21 lakh homes have been given to the beneficiaries uh, and this was given handed over virtually by the prime minister uh, in a program which was conducted in madhya pradesh via uh, video conferencing what are the uses of such thing how are the, the how is uh, the employing employment being generated is a question what the students should ask themselves in the list of the proud indians who have been taking over as ceos of the multinational companies and the world best companies the new feather in the cap is mr raj subramanyam mr raj subramanyam who is presently working as uh, uh, the firm's presi uh, president and the chief operating officers and who joined the fedex in 1991 is all set to become the fedex new ceo uh, mr raj subramanyam is originally from kerala thiruvananthapuram and uh, he has a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering and from iit bombay and also mba from university of texas so basically another uh, feather in the cap and a uh, lot of ceos maybe india should uh, give out more people like this so that one day we dominate the world the researchers in euro uh, us sorry had discovered one part of the rna that invades and displaces another part of the same rna enabling it to rapidly change its shape well this is called as strand displacement and while the strand displacement it appears to switch genetic expressions from on to off so we heard this phrase of genetic rna switching from on to off what is this genetic rna switching on to off well uh, the rna molecules are the mobile messengers of genes they carry information on the production of proteins from the dna to the ribosomes so the biologists have discovered now discovered that such micro rnas can also come into direct contact with the genes and effectively turning off the gene in the process so uh, we have heard about this turning on and off of the genes but now for the first time probably we can see it in a form of a video so it has been explained clearly as to how this thing is happening if you are a um, enthusiast please watch this video on to the youtube it is really an amazing video uh well uh, after uh, the china's contract was uh, uh, seized by sri lanka to build the wind farms on the sri lankan islands uh, it, sri lanka has rather india has agreed to provide the funding for the project and it will help our neighboring state to uh, come out of the economic crisis but as i am recording this uh, video a uh, uh, news coming in and we will just deal with sri lankan crisis in bit more detail uh bad news for people with diabetes i have no idea if this how true this is but it has been seen that uh, men who take met for uh, metformin a most widely prescribed drug for your uh, di uh, diabetes to uh, kind of a thing and uh, it it they are now saying that this drug may be linked to birth defects in babies of male patients well uh, it is said that there is some kind of a uh, kind of a genital birth defects happening to the boys who are consuming metformin well i have no idea on this whether it's true or false it is a news which has been uh, shared on the hindustan times i will certainly request you to look for an alternatives to the diabetes instead of going for it there are a lot of uh, herbal plants which reduce the diabetes just look for it and maybe shift on to it all the men out there with diabetes the researchers have developed a robotized insect to help research and uh, uh, search the collapsed buildings for survivors uh, dr hirotaka sato installed a backpack containing a communication chip a carbon dioxide sensor motion sensor and an infrared camera along with a battery on a madagascan cockroach if you can see this photograph you see this uh, cockroach this is a generally an, uh, a little bit bigger than the average uh, cockroach but this cockroach are these are these roaches are very very hardy they can survive in uh, in the most of the uh, tiniest of the places and have the ability to survive under lot of uh, rubble so 
just imagine if one such cockroach with so many things one is the carbon dioxide uh, sensor a motion sensor uh, probably an infrared camera a ba battery and also a communication chip going down you just put it down in a building which has been raised to ground due to very any reason it goes down and starts transmitting and since it's an insect it is constantly moving and it it survives for good long period and that is helpful for retrieving the people who have been uh, under this uh, you know down buildings so a very good uh, uh, i must say innovation a good news for the students studying in class 12 uh, physics chemistry and maths in class 12 will no longer be mandatory for admissions to undergraduate courses in architecture till date if you had to go for architecture you had to have physics chemistry and maths in your class 12 so that is no more no longer required this is as per the all india Inst council for technical education and uh, along with this the fashion technology packaging technology are also other two subjects wherein you will not require physics chemistry and maths so all those students who feel that because without pcm uh, they can't go into an engineering well here is a chance it is all yours and in the same way computer science electronics biology are among the subjects which are eligible for admission to three courses well uh, now again an important topic us deputy national secretary uh, dalip singh who had visited to india and said that a uh, rather hard hitting one if he, he said that if china once again breaches the line of actual control russia would come running to india's defense is it so he has posed a question and also indirectly they in, indirectly hinted india that see Russia will not come to your rescue do you want to antagonize us also that is a kind of a threat which is china uh, rather us has given to india and this comes because uh, us feels that we are taking the gas from russia well uh, let to make things in a very clear perspective india is majoritarily dep dependent on the middle east for its gas nat oil and natural gas resources and uh, about uh, some of oil comes from us and less than 1% of our total imports come from russia whereas the european union ever since the conflict has begun has purchased more oil than anybody else and it still blames on to india even us is uh, feeling the same so india has to have its own independent stand on this and whether china uh, russia comes to our help or not if china does any other galwan type of activity that we will not uh, know but one thing is for sure india should stand up for itself because we have seen that no country even us did not come to us uh, when galwan happened so expecting somebody to come for you will be a waste of time so india should be self reliant in its defense also well amidst all these things happening india and france have begun the naval war game in arabian sea by the name of varuna 2022 and in this of various platforms of ships including submarines maritime patrol aircrafts and helicopters of two navies participated and these exercises actually they share the commitment of both the nations to the security safety and freedom of the global maritime commons well it's a good thing india should have such kind of a things well this year onwards a new income tax rule has come into effect and that is the income from virtual digital assets vdas will be taxed at 30% and with a clause that the losses incurred from one vda cannot be offset against income from another vda so as such you will have to pay 30% of the tax and a cap on tax free contribution uh, contributions up to 2.5 lakh will be imposed on the employees provident fund epf account and the surcharge on the long term capital gains will be capped at 15% for all the assets so uh, one should be aware of the new rules uh, we have seen the visits happening from many foreign country external affairs ministers foreign ministers etc to india in this week and uh, we have also seen 
the foreign minister of russia uh, mr uh, sergey lavrov uh, coming to india on friday he was first received by the minister of external affairs mr jay shankar and followed by he met uh, prime minister modi and handed over a personal message to him well i uh, w- the process what was the message i don't know but my speculation is that now probably the world is looking for a mediator who can get both the countries to a table and discuss a ceasefire so probably probably something is brewing up wherein india might act as a mediator to calm down this total chaos which is happening between ukraine and russia and probably that is why even uh mr uh, sergey lavrov has openly said that what is harm if india tries to take a center stage in this entire conflict uh bad news for india well otherwise it is concerned with sri lanka sri lanka government has declared a state of emergency amidst the economic crisis that is happening in sri lanka we have recently seen about 3 uh, days back sri lanka Uh, we had about 2 3 deaths for people who were waiting at the petrol pump to draw the petrol and diesel the petrol diesel reserves came down then the uh, government went on to switching off the street lights and saving conserving the energy and uh, requesting people not to put on a lot of lights and conserve the energy slowly slowly that thing went bad and now with protests breaking out and people coming out out in front of the president's house uh, the kind of uh, and the kind of damages that they are doing the country has now been pu- put under an emergency and amidst this india has already sent about uh, 40000 uh, metric tons of f- uh, fuel oil that is petrol gas and diesel and also it has been it has sent the hu- humanitarian aid in terms of food grains to sri lanka immediately that is as of today that is saturday and uh, at the same time uh, the prime minister of nepal uh, sher bahadur deoba who visited the country that and met prime minister uh, this uh, friday is also an important step this is the uh, rather the first visit of uh, a nepal prime minister uh, after a long time and uh, now uh, in the meeting both the prime ministers jointly inaugurated a cross border rail network between jayanagar in bihar and nepal's kurta and signed four memorandums of understanding well this might be an apu one certainly there is something covert to this a sudden visit from nepal's prime minister uh, to discuss something i we might get something again very shortly but we can just hold on to it China has uh, openly said that it will back the military ruled Myanmar no matter how the situation changes and it said that China has always placed Myanmar in an important position in its neighbor neighborly diplomacy and wants to deepen the exchange and exchanges and cooperation well this is every country's dream to keep saying goody words and keep the country in uh, its claws well why is it important to us because myanmar is becoming a safe havens for the insurgent attacks we have seen so many insurgent attacks happening the insurgents from myanmar get into indian border uh, indian uh, states create a uh, hell here and then they get into myanmar jungles so having a good myan relations with myanmar is essential for india and chinese interference into myanmar is a uh, probably question for us so one should be a little careful on these developments what are happening in myanmar and uh, as far as the china is concerned please be uh, aware as to wherever china has put its investment that country is slowly getting into a economic uh, crisis you see sri lanka the way it imp- uh, invested into sri lanka and now sri lanka is totally down and same is with pakistan pakistan will slowly go down so beware of chinese investments is the lesson what we can uh, take from the their recent developments as i was discussing my in the first uh, update 
a new variant of covid-19 has been found in united kingdoms uh, and uh, the county's uh, health service agency said that this new strand uh, is called as xe a mutation of both the ba.1 and ba.2 omicron strains well we had we had just come out of this ba2 of the omicron strain and now this is a third one it's a, it is referred to as a recombination or a recombinant of these two and it is said that rather who has issued a warning that the xe variant of omicron may be more transmissible than any strain of covid-19 found so far so that's what i said please put on your mask don't though some states have given out uh, a, a relaxation as far as the mask is concerned declaring that the covid is out but still please wear mask a major thing another important news happening this week was the historic india australia economic cooperation and trade agreement a real historic one i must say and uh, under uh, several labor intensive sectors will get duty free access to the markets in australia under this historic economic cooperation and trade agreement well uh, these markets include textiles apparels leather footwear select agricultural and fish products and also some things like gems jewelry pharma and other machineries and electrical goods well that means overall about 96% of indian goods will get duty free access and that is a very big news for the country and it is much needed for our economic growth well uh, as the entire the world is under reeling under the crisis there are countries which are going into the depression there are countries which are trying to put sanctions there are countries who are playing against sanctions the oil crisis is there amongst all these probably india is the only country i must say which is enjoying the ipl in its home ground that is an altogether a different league but uh, that happens and if you see the world is trying to woo the indian uh, political diaspora to be on to their side so this is i feel it's a very good development and one major uh, question for all of you i must say is that do you think covid has been a real boon for india yes or no i know uh, losses la- uh, lost in uh, lives lost in this uh, pandemic are can never be bought back and that that void will always remain in our lives but uh, it is if this question is posed to you in an interview as to do you think covid is has been positive for india or negative for india i think there are a lot of answers what do you feel on this topic do leave in your comment or rather any topic if you feel that you have something to share add or even to rebut please leave a comment i'll be really happy to see it and reply to it thank you so much for staying with me and i will see you next sunday at the same time till then please wear mask take care of your loved ones and stay safe